Next up is constant acceleration. And I'm going to talk about these equations briefly and, and, and graphs that are associated with them. If I have constant acceleration, that means the velocity is constantly changing. So I'm going to look at the graphs first, then go back and look at the equations. If I have constant acceleration, here's a graph of the acceleration versus time. It's constant. So it's just a, it's just a horizontal line. The acceleration is positive and staying positive in this case. Oh, so if the acceleration is constant, the velocity is constantly changing, which means I'm going to have a straight line, but it's going to have a slope associated with it. Excellent. And if the velocity is constantly changing, if I draw a position graph, the position graph is going to be curving up because the slope of the graph is constantly changing. OK? Now, there's three equations that go with this. And this is in the book. There's a table, and it's right near a picture of some geese. That's how I always find it. And it looks, looks like this. And, and these three equations, by the way, are, are the three equations that you can use to solve, solve like every problem in chapter two. These three equations will do you proud. That's all you need. I'll say something, too. You know, remember at the start of the class, I said I'm only going to teach you five things? This is not, I'm not teaching anything yet. This is purely definitional. When you define velocity and you define acceleration, these are the equations that you get out of it. It's purely definitional and mathematics. There's no rule of physics that we've learned yet. We're not going to see one until about the third week, OK? So here's my equation for the velocity. The final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. And you're saying to yourself, heavens to Betsy, Brian, that equation looks so much like the delta x is equal to velocity times delta t equation. It's the same thing. Acceleration is change in velocity. Velocity is change in position. So the equation is identical. I can say the final position is the initial position plus the initial velocity times the time interval plus 1 half times the acceleration times the time interval squared. We'll use that one a bunch. Sometimes we get problems where there's no time involved. We'll see some examples of that. Final velocity squared is initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the change in position. That's our equation for that. We'll look at a couple of examples. Motion with constant acceleration. We'll start with this one. This is a rocket launch. This is a Saturn V takeoff. Oh, yeah. And this is like the rockets that carried like people to the moon back when I was a kid. And this thing is changing its velocity. How do we know that? Well, it was sitting still, and now it's moving. But it turns out those engines are firing, and if they do that, they cause it to accelerate. Positive or negative acceleration? Positive. It's moving up. And it's moving up faster and faster and faster. It's a positive acceleration. And it turns out the acceleration is essentially constant. If you take a movie and do a slow motion version of it and measure the position of the top of the rocket as a function of time, you get a graph that looks like, you get, a, uh, you, you get a something that looks like this. So here's the position of the top of the rocket as a function of time. See how the dots are getting farther apart? That tells me the velocity is changing and it's getting bigger and it's going upward. It's a positive acceleration. If I measure the length of each of these increments, that's my delta x divided by delta t, calculate velocity. Plot the velocity, and it looks like this. Velocity is steadily increasing. And I can calculate the slope of the velocity graph. And the slope of the velocity graph is the acceleration. Do rise over run. Rise, 27 meters per second. And the run here, 1.5 seconds. And so I can get an acceleration of about 18 meters per second squared. That's what I get for the acceleration, which is a lot by the way. And we'll, we'll talk about the forces necessary to make this happen. And if you're accelerating at like 1.8 Gs, that's the kind of acceleration that you would get on like really intense roller coasters. But the people who are riding in the rocket experience that not for like a couple of seconds. They experience it for two minutes or two and a half minutes. So I want to look at a, qu and a, a question that has to do with that. Suppose. Saturn V rocket lifts off an acceleration of 18 meters per second squared. This constant acceleration continues for the full time of the burn of the first stage. It's 150 seconds with the rocket traveling straight up. And these numbers are approximately right. It continues to accelerate as long as they're firing the engines. Question, at the end of this time, how fast is the rocket moving? And B, how high is the rocket? OK, that's our, that's our question. 
So we're faced with the difficulty of taking this problem and turning it into, we have to like do some calculations best. It's like a word problem, okay? How do we start? S number one, always, always, very first thing, we draw a picture, we draw a picture. That's the first thing that we need to do, okay? <laughs> and, and I'm not a very good artist. And here's, here's my picture of this situation. Now, I'm gonna draw a real specific picture and it's got real specific elements as part of it, okay? And I'll tell you what those elements are. Any of these motion problems, we have to identify important points in the motion, okay? And this problem has two important points. One, the start, and two, the finish. Pretty straightforward. And the start is when the rocket's sitting on the pad and you've just fired off the motors, okay? So I'm gonna draw that. Here's my, here's my picture of my, my rocket. And actually, I'm not even gonna draw a rocket like that. I'm gonna draw a rocket like this. That's my rocket right there. And it looks the same as the student rocket across the front of the class, and that's good. Everything, we're doing this particle model. Everything kind of like looks like a point. There's my rocket. At that instance, what should we call that position right there? That's our initial position, yi. Let's, let's attach a number to it. What are we gonna call that one? Zero, because it's on the ground. And we said typically that's what we're gonna call the basis of our y coordinate system. What's my initial velocity? And I do vy because it's the vertical velocity. What's my initial value of velocity? Zero. Excellent, and so that's, that's the start of the problem. The end of the problem comes here, comes later, rockets way up here. What happened between the initial point and the final point? The engines fired, the rocket accelerated upward, and so I'm gonna draw an acceleration vector that tells me the rocket's accelerating upward. So at the end of the problem, I've got yf, that's my final position. Do we know what that is? No, that's what we're supposed to find. Oh yes, would then be easy if it was in the problem statement. How about the final velocity? We don't know what that is either. These are the two pieces that we have to find. And we know what happened between this point and that point. Is it accelerated? Oh heavens, and we know the value of the acceleration as well, right? What's the acceleration? 18 meters per second squared, 18 meters per second per second. That's it. And this is my statement of the problem. Now I draw it like this. This was like the first version that I made for the book where we have like the, the picture and then I have a table of values. We always have a visual overview to accompany problems in the textbook. And, and you have something that like this like this. As an advanced problem solver, I go with the more streamlined version of it that's over here. You find a style that works for you, okay? But you need to start with some sort of picture. And this just helps you wrap your mind around the problem. It helps you wrap your mind around it and kind of like stage it. We've drawn a picture, we've put in values, we got the story. Next up, we're gonna solve some equations. And there's two pieces that we're asked to find. First piece, if we look back, is how fast is the rocket moving? B, how high is the rocket? Oh, well, heavens to Betsy, we've got equations that will help us with that. So if I go back a couple of slides, look at that, final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Then I go up to where I've drawn my picture. Can I say final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time, that's it, right? Acceleration times delta t. What's the initial velocity? What's the acceleration? 18 meters per second per second, 18 meters per second squared. What's delta t? What's the time interval between the start and the end? 150 seconds. So the velocity is 18 times 150. Boy, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? And if we solve that, we end up with 2,700 meters per second. That's what we get. Now, does that seem fast? That's 2.7 kilometers a second. It is fast. It's a rocket, okay? And so that's, that's, a, that's a, you expect it to be high. So that, that, number, that number is reasonable. 2.7 kilometers a second is going faster than the speed of sound. That's pretty crazy. Uh, okay, 
Next piece we're asked to find is the position. I want the final position, so y final. And I'm going to use that basic equation is equal to y initial plus the initial y velocity times delta t plus one half times the y acceleration times delta t squared. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, heavens to Betsy, I've got everything I need. What's the initial position? Zero. What's the initial velocity? What's the acceleration? 18 meters per second squared. What's the time interval? 150 seconds. Excellent. And so if I solve that out, I get something like, and I'm going to do an approximate here, 200,000 kilometers. I'm sorry, 200,000 meters. 200,000 kilometers, that would be impressive. 200,000 meters, which is approximately equal to 200 kilometers. It's like 130 miles. And so that's it. Then we say, was that seem reasonable? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like one, 2.6 kilometers a second. 2.7 kilometers a second, 150 seconds. You can cover some ground. And so the, the height seems reasonable. Again, it, it's a rocket. You know, that's kind of what they're about. It's like going real fast and going real high. So everything looks, everything looks good.